you know, it, it's been known for a very long time that pubescent girls in particular are sensitive to psychological epidemics. So mm -hmm. there's a literature on that going back about 300 years. So that's how long the literature has been around. And that was Freudian hysteria, right, mm. back in the, in, the eight, in the late 1800s. And it just morphs into various forms, cutting and, and anorexia and bulimia. And well, now the gender transformation um, pathology but I suspect that the next thing that's going to happen in Canada when the gender furor wears off, which it'll probably burn itself out in about three or four years, that would be my guess. But if the maid people have their way, I've already seen, um, what would you say, romanticized mm. death encounters yeah. distributed online. And so that... I think that'll be the next thing that'll confront us in Canada. Well, here's what's really troubling about that, and nobody seems to know this. So I'd love the opportunity to talk about it because it's really concerning to me. So it's not only that it's made. People don't understand how made works. There's the track one, the track two, you know, the immediate, the 90 day to end of life and and all of that. And, and yes, they are, they, they stayed the bill till 2027 to the next vote, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So that's all great. So technically mental health's not included. But what I found out yesterday that really, really bothered me was the mechanism of the actual procedure. So there's this drug called sodium theropentol, and it's made in Italy, okay? So it's used by anesthesiologists. And the anesthesiologist uh, that came forward with this at this testimony was, this individual had been an anesthesiologist for 25 years. He came forward with the Senate subcommittee talking about this with MAID and his concerns with it because... Made is being seen as compassionate and empathetic in care. Mm. So what he did is... You know, the, the Nazi euthanasia program oh, started with compassion and care. Right? I'm so, so glad you said that because mm. when I got to do trigonometry, we went to the war museums. Mm. And what terrified me the most mm. was walking through the World War II portion and seeing the same verbiage. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah, definitely. People were telling me I was going crazy. I'm like, no, 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 you don't understand. No, no, it's the same thing. It's identical. Yeah, it's exactly yeah. the same the thing. The mentally ill, the people that yeah. are, yeah, yeah, yeah. So what's people really- People too distressed to live. Thank you. Right, right. and the categories keep expanding. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what we're seeing, the ex expansion. So the sodium uh, theopentol, which was really wild about it, is this anesthesiologist was like, it's going missing. We don't have a lot of it. We can't get it anymore all of a sudden over this past couple of years. And so he started researching it. Well, it's made in Italy, and Italy falls under the EU. And under the EU laws, you can never make a drug that is going to be used for execution. But Canada, in North, like in North America, the United States and Canada had been using it for execution in America for death penalty. So they finally caught on to that. And anesthesiologists use it as one of the first drugs pushed to put you under. But here's what's really crazy is they said, well, this is there's got to be more to this. So they did a, it's a Freedom of Information Act with the NPR, with a journalist, and they got over 300 autopsies of individuals who were executed in America. And they didn't just get the autopsy kind of overview, they were given in-depth files. And when they went through them, 85% of those bodies showed a two times level increase of water in the lungs. So what was happening is when this drug is pushed, it causes a drowning and it's stated as akin to dying by waterboarding or drowning. Meaning, the reason people in Canada who are given maids seem peaceful is because they're giving a paralytic first. So they're completely paralyzed, then this drug is administered as one of the four, and they start drowning to death. Okay? So that means that when it's done by IV, it takes 10 to 15 minutes. That person could be literally drowning. Well, they are. They're drowning to death, but they could be screaming if they weren't under a paralytic. They're drowning to death. We waterboarded people in Guantanamo. There's a reason we had to stop. It falls under cruel and unusual punishment. Yet we are having people like dying with dignity say that this falls under compassion and empathy. When you're drowning people chemically to death, you found this out at the Senate hearing? No, I found this out yesterday when the Senate hearing was given to me and the transcripts were given to me. It was Dr. Joel B. Zivok, Associate Professor of Emory University and School of Medicine, the Vancouver Coastal Health Authority. So what's been happening is that case I was telling you about, Fraser Health is withholding the families. They can't see her autopsy. They're not allowing it. They won't give access. The police have tried to get this it. This is the same case. This is the same case. Yeah. So they will not give it to the family. 
So Fraser Health is a bed, like literally lying and holding information back. So what's wild about this though, is dying with dignity says that this is a painless death. Well, if you take made orally, it takes between 30 minutes to 24 hours. 24 hours of active drowning while you're under a paralytic. So the autopsies are showing that you actually drowned to death and you're waterboarded to death within your own body and you can't move or do anything about it. And that's how dying with dignity in the Canadian government has disguised made while they're offering it to Canadian veterans instead of treatment so they don't have to pay for their pensions, so they don't have to pay for their health care. The same yeah, way they well, don't have to do with that's part of the slippery slope, of isn't it? it is. Because it makes such... Well, I saw, I saw the other day, now a month ago probably, I think it was a Japanese philosopher who said that it was incumbent on the elderly to submit themselves to government-assisted dying because of the benefits on the cost-saving side. Are you struggling with back taxes or unfiled returns this year? The IRS is actively escalating collections by adding 20,000 new agents. In these challenging times, your best defense is to use Tax Network USA. Along with hiring thousands of new agents and field officers, the IRS has kicked off 2024 by sending over 5 million pay up letters to those who have unfiled tax returns or balances owed. These guys are not your friends. Don't waive your rights and speak with these agents independently without backup. Tax Network USA, a trusted tax relief firm, has saved over $1 billion in back taxes for their clients, and they can help you secure the best deal possible. Whether you owe $10,000 or $10 million, they can help. Whether it's business or personal taxes, whether you have the means to pay or are on a fixed income, Tax Network can help resolve your tax burdens once and for all. Seize control of your financial future now and don't let tax issues overpower you. Contact Tax Network USA for immediate relief and expert guidance. Call 1-800-245-6000 or visit tnusa.com slash Peterson. Turn to Tax Network USA and find your path to financial peace of mind. That's tnusa.com slash Peterson. So in 20, this is one of my favorite ones. I love this one because most people don't know this. So in 2021, they had a gross reduction in healthcare of $109.2 million. When they did MAID, they saved another, they cut out another 22 million. So by, by, by the end of it all in that year, the healthcare system just from doing MAID instead of actually giving people palliative care was 86.9 million alone. Oh, oh. That's just one year without the spike. In 2021, it was 10,500. 2022, it's 13,000. And there's been a 30% increase since then. And a high rate is happening in British Columbia. High cost of living, mm -hmm. nowhere to live, mm -hmm. no housing, and no one to look after these people because the younger individuals just don't have the finances because they can't even buy their own home. So how could they then put somebody in care that costs eight to $10,000 a month when you can't even afford to live in a two bedroom basement apartment? And furthermore, there's no housing because we're taking every single person into this country and acting as if Canadians are second citizens because that's what's happening. Mm. Canada is falling. We have no identity. We're killing our own citizens. And people act like people like me are going crazy. I'm not going crazy. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs. We are killing innocent people and children are on the chalk. Like they are on the chopping block. If we didn't stop that bill by the 17th, children down to the age of 12 with parent consent. A 17-year-old could walk into the hospital and say, I want to die by maid. And guess what? If you try to stop it as a parent, you will be arrested. I'm not sure morally where we have either lost our minds, lost the plot, been paid off, or just decided that we no longer care about the generation after us. But something is going really wrong when I have group homes calling me or messaging me on Instagram going, Kelsey, I'm hearing of huge swaths of these groups sitting down going, convincing each other to die, that they're going to walk in together. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because Simons has made it seem like it's bubbles on a beach yeah, in yeah, a cave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's so the romanticization that I was talking so, about. So what are we saying to the youth that there's no future, there's no goals, you can't buy a home, there's nowhere to live, you can't get a... Don't try to get a doctor's appointment. Yeah. Don't bother. So honestly, what do they have to look forward to? But I'm telling you right now, this has never been talked about. This part here where it is drowning to death, where you're waterboarding to death, 
No one, not one person has said this. I have never heard this. And you just found out about this? Yesterday. And I found out because there was an event um, in South Surrey that my girlfriend I was telling you about, her mother was taken. She was at, and she goes, Kelsey, one of the Delta hospice centers is being shut down because they refused to do maids. So it wasn't necessarily Rebel, but it was Sheila and uh, Kian. They made this documentary to talk to people like us going, they're saying that they need government right to do this, but hey, they're already doing it and they've been doing it. And we have audio recordings of veterans. We have the Minister of Veterans Affairs lying to Mercedes Stevenson on the West Block saying it was one veteran when we have multiple veterans, multiple case managers, audio recordings and written testimonies. So. Are we just okay with everyone lying now? Is that where we're at? We accept lies as truth and no, there's no moral qualms with that? Because if anybody is a God-fearing individual right now, the whole idea is I don't really care what you believe and all I ask is stop lying. Be honest. If you want to kill people to save money, say it. That's it. Just say what you mean, but stop dancing around like you're doing this out of empathy. You are killing vulnerable people to save money to send to another country that bought you out in 2000 and was it 13? And that's a CSIS document. We've sold our country, we've sold our people, and we've told our youth that we should just die because there's nothing to live for in this country. How am I supposed to combat that? I'm one voice up there. Thank God you showed up. If you didn't show up, none of us People like me would have no footsteps to walk and we would have no path carved out for us. You're the first in the door. You took the heat. You're like the breacher. You're the guy that shows up and goes, I'm going to kick that door in and whatever's going to come is I'm just going to take it because I have to. You had a moral obligation because if you didn't do it, the rest of us would have nowhere to go and nowhere to turn if you didn't show up. So I'm so grateful to be here and I'm so grateful that you gave us the space because I don't know what else to do because I can't scream any louder. I'm loud, but I don't know what else to do anymore. We deserve better, and so do our kids, and so do our citizens. We don't deserve this. Canada doesn't deserve No, No one deserves to be waterboarded to death except for the people that deserve to be waterboarded to death, and there are people that deserve to be waterboarded to death. And I can tell you right now that I've seen that done to someone. You don't wish that on anyone. You don't wish that on anyone. It would have been easier. It's easier to put bricks around my feet and go jump in the ocean than it is to die by maid. That is a, that is a terrifying way to die.